national broadcaster, international broadcaster on the Internet, uh, a multiple best-selling author. How would you use this power from this day forward? How would you use this power to both inspire people? Well, no, to inspire people, not both to. Because the word inspire has in it everything I want to say. Inspire. Inspire to give you courage, to give you hope, to give you strength, to give you wisdom. That's what inspire means to me. You know, how many times have I got into a house of worship in my life and walked out feeling emptier than when I went in? That's why religion is dying in America. It's not growing. I would go into these houses of worship in the emptiest times of my life. I'd come out feeling worse than when I went in. Do you know why? Because there was no leadership, just like the political class. You go in there, you hear mumbo, jumbo, and weakness. You don't want that. You want fire and brimstone. You want a man to get up there and lead you out of your darkness into the light, don't you? All right, I'll, I'll back in a minute here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. Will it soon be outlawed in Obama's hateful America? Stay tuned and find out what's coming over the next number of months. We don't know where this madness leads. But, uh... I want to go back to my main point. I've got such callers holding on the line. One young man said I inspired him to become a successful soldier in Afghanistan. Another caller from BAP in Dallas is holding. Brad, who says he's a black man, and I inspired him from being a truck driver to uh, being in a doctorate program. I want to get to those callers and others, but there's so much bubbling underneath the volcano right now that I have to stay with my own volcanic eruption before I go to the eruption of the callers. And I want to go back to the main point which is inspiration, and the inspiration that I'm talking about. So I, I look at what people are emailing, and one woman writes, she says, oh, Savage, Susan Livingston says, just be yourself. I love the crazy quilt of madness, genius, academia, ego, pride, humility, joy, pathos, science, poetry, snacks, and, and on and on. So in other words, they like me as I am, and I get that. But that's not what I'm talking about. I asked you. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Sometimes you got to go in a different direction. And I'm talking about inspiration today in the Savage Nation and how to inspire without using what the left uses, which is hate and division, without using anger, rage, false righteous indignation, which the left uses on a daily basis. Wake up today. We see that the board member, a board member of the Colorado ACLU, posted a Facebook statement that all followers or supporters of trump should be killed shot murdered read it and loretta lynch said nothing madame defarge of the justice department obama's madame defarge said nothing robespierre said nothing so you see loretta lynch only said that to intimidate all proper american patriots they are at war with us. They're at war with the truth. They're at war with America. I love when they talk about American values. Well, it's not an American value to threaten people who you disagree with, Loretta. Didn't you learn that in college, anywhere along the way, in the Al Sharpton School of Hatred and Division? Speaking of that low-life gutter rat, Al Sharpton, I couldn't believe my eyes when last night I read the news and I saw that the Supreme Court yesterday was discussing affirmative action at the University of Texas and lo and behold, in the audience was one of the lowest creatures in the history of the world. Al Sharpton was allowed into the Supreme Court to sit there and terrify the justices with his ugly face. What was he in there for? To intimidate that be a riot outside the Supreme Court unless they again favored unqualified people over qualified people? Is that what, is that what he was sitting there for? What else would he be there for? 
How else do we have this government of ours, I thought. Well, but I want to go back to what I want to go back to. And today, I'll, I mean, this hour, I'll take a different turn on it. Because it's a simple question. How would you use the power I have as a broadcaster and best-selling author if you were me? I just wrote another book, Government Zero, which I'll mention proudly. Because last night, the plaque came. I had my publisher send me plaques, which they make up which are like my mini Academy Awards. I have six of them, eight of them. I don't know how many. I joke with my family. I sent pictures out to my family of the latest one of Government Zero, and it shows the New York Times list, and it hit number three. It shows the list with that title, and underneath is the cover, and underneath that is a congratulations. I put it on the wall, and I say jokingly to the family, my granddaughter can sell it on Antiques Roadshow in 50 years. <laughs> you know, And I can just see what they'll say. Well... Did your grandfather sign it? <laughs> because if he signed the back of it, it's worth a lot more. So I think I'm going to get out the old Sharpie and sign all of these plaques as I give them <laughs> to her eventually. I always see things in terms of the past, present, and future. Nothing's, nothing is what it is to me. Everything's past, present, and future. The same day that the plaque arrived, he said, where do I get inspiration from? I told you my father was a small businessman owned a little small antique store in New York's Manhattan. And some of the stuff in there at that time was really good. I recognized it for what it was. I always had an eye for the good stuff. I could tell the difference between Dore bronze and, and let's say, pot metal, for example. I learned how to do that. Different type of metals, different type of clocks. He taught me to look at the hands of a piece of sculpture. He said, always look at the hands and the feet. You'll see whether they're good or bad. He taught me to look at paintings in the same way. Many artists can paint bodies, they can paint faces, they can't paint hands and feet. He was right. He was right about a lot of things. So I learned at the hands of an, uh, an intuitive, smart man with regard to things that are good and things that are not good. And so one of the things I currently do is I collect antique guns. So yesterday uh, arrived at my doorstep, actually I think it was today, uh, a set of dueling pistols from 1880 from France. They're gorgeous, stunningly beautiful. You say, dueling pistols? That's so interesting. What were dueling pistols used for in France, in England, in the United States? What, what were dueling pistols used for? To duel. If a man insulted another man, generally on the je of the gentleman class, they didn't go to Facebook. They went to the dueling field. That's how they settle their scores in those days. In a similar way, the gangbangers do it today, but they don't do it with the same honor or dignity. The low-life vermin in the ghettos don't use dueling uh, as a form of gentlemen settling a score. They just walk up behind someone and shoot their brains out from behind because they're lower than animals in that regard. No, this is not as noble. I know many of you, the liberals, say, well, well don't the gangbangers do the same thing? You say, settle scores with guns? Well, I just answered the question for you. No, that's not the way it was done. But the, the point is not the gun. The point is the workmanship. The point is, is that things are preserved through generations that are beautiful, whether it be a pair of dueling pistols or an antique statue or a painting. You look at the great art in Europe. What in the world does that not do for you when you go to Europe and go to Italy and see the great art in the churches, by the way? And here in America, in the churches, in the universities. And what are the illegitimate doing on these campuses today? The illegitimate who never belonged there in the first place, but was shuffled in, are now screaming, rip down the art because it's racist art. Rip down all the paintings that have Jesus as a white baby. I swear to God, there's a lawsuit right now from some illegitimate piece of... Ter I can't even use the word. He wants all of the art in the museums in America to re be removed because it offends him as a non-white person that all depictions of Jesus are of a white man. This is how sick the country has become, that we would let such gutter rats rise to such high places, and I blame the lawyers, I don't blame the rat. In other words, if you have a legal system that is so flawed that it permits this kind of lawsuit, you know in America anyone can sue anyone for anything, why is that? Why? Because the lawyers wrote the laws, not because the people want that law. But anyway, that's a separate point. I'm saying inspiration. So I get some of my inspiration by buying guns or clocks or paintings, small things, that show me that people can preserve th things through war, revolution, hurricane, tornado, fires. Somehow they're preserved. People preserve 
what they can. And then we have these barbarians called the Islamic State that tear down everything in their path. They are the lowest form of humanity. They blow up Christian churches. They are committing genocide against Christians and Yazidis in the Middle East, and the creatures in the White House say nothing. They don't even send weapons to defend them. Nothing. They come begging for weapons, and the creatures in the White House don't even defend them. They get away with virtual murder. They get, they're aiding and abetting genocide in the Middle East, and they get away with it because of why? Because there's no press anymore. If there was a press showing the pictures of churches burning and Christians being burned alive or Yazidis being raped that are being smuggled out, the people would be riled up against this incompetent pseudo-administration filled with pseudo-liberals, pseudo-liberals, because they're not really liberals. They're anything but liberals. They're Machiavellian monsters, power-mad Machiavellian monsters. So it brings us back to inspiration. It's funny that Al-Qaeda has a magazine called Inspire, I believe, where they inspire Muslims to kill. Did you know that? It's Al-Qaeda puts out a magazine called Inspire in Arabic. And they inspire young people to go out and learn how to burn, kill, maim, torture. Can you imagine such a thing? Can you imagine such a thing? Well, you better imagine it because it's going on. So that leads us to only one question, which is the question of the day. How can you fight such hatred? Can you fight it with love? The Christians would say, yes, love rules all. Well, uh, I'm not so sure. I'm kind of there, but I'm skating around it. Because I told you about the Jewish ghetto fighters, the ones who didn't want to go to their to the gas chamber, the ones who did live in a sewer and escape into the woods, and how to kill Germans with their bare hands in order to get a gun, in order to kill more Germans, in order to survive the war in the woods, in 20 to degrees below zero without a shelter. Go figure that one out. How could an ordinary butcher, baker, candlestick maker have done that? Could you do that? I don't know whether you could do it. I don't know whether I could do it. That's not the point. The point is, is that without guns, you ask anyone who's ever studied the Holocaust, ask anyone who's ever studied it, and ask them about the survivors. Every survivor will tell you the same thing. The survivors will tell you, those who fled into the woods to fight with the partisans, who were mainly Russians, by the way, every one of them will tell you the same thing, that without guns they all would have died. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. The first thing they tried to get when they escaped into the woods was a gun, whether it was from a German or a farmhouse. Did you know that? They had to break into farmhouses and steal a, a farmer's shotgun in order to survive even another minute in the woods. You didn't know that. Don't tell that to the government, though. Don't tell that to Hillary Clinton. I want to go back, though, to what I'm trying to say to you, which is inspiration and where does it come from? Anger, rage, false righteous indignation. Okay, yeah, fine. You could be inspired by all those things, but then you lose your humanity. That's the whole point I'm trying to make. You cannot let the cynical times that we are living in deprive you of your, of your humanity. Because if you lose your humanity, you're going to lose everything. Even if you survive physically, you will die spiritually. I guess that's what I'm trying to say to you through today's show. And sometimes it takes me a while to, to develop an idea. You know, it's said, and I learned it when I was a young boy, or it actually was, and I was a struggling young man, and I couldn't get where I wanted to go. No matter what I did, no matter how I tried, I was just hitting stone walls. No matter what I did, I couldn't get where I wanted to go. No matter how high I went in education, teaching, learning, it didn't matter. They locked me out because of my race. And I just was so frustrated and I was so depressed, I didn't know what to do. I had a young family. I didn't know if I could survive with the pain I was suffering. And then I was reading things, uh, inspirational books. Little inspirational books helped me a great deal. And one of them said that instead of sitting at your on your couch, this was in the 70s, lamenting what's wrong in your life, Get up, and they said you could write a letter in two minutes, what you could do in one or two minutes. In those days, there was no Internet. Write a letter to someone who could change your life. Imagine what you could do now with the Internet in two minutes. Think about how many emails you could send in two minutes that can change your life instead of wasting your time on Facebook or Instagram. Just wasting your time on these stupid social outlets. Think about it, what you could really do with two minutes of your life using the Internet, the power that you really have. Or another one said... If you're depressed, get up and go walk around the block. Think about what one walk around the block could do when you're depressed. Get off the couch, go walk around the block. And then another book I read when I was insomniac. I had insomnia. I couldn't sleep. I was terrified. And I read a book that said to me, no man ever died 
from a lack of sleep, but he's died from a lack of, from worrying about a lack of sleep because we don't need to.